नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय श्रीमद भगवद गीता एज इट इज ट्रांसलेशन एंड कॉमेंट्री बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस ए सी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी प्रभुपाद Chapter 18, text 64. Are you showing 54? 64. Please. Yeah. Sarva Guhyatamam Bhuyaha Shrno Me Paramam Vachaha Ishtaha Asi Me Dridham Iti Tataha Bakshyami Te Hitam Sarva Guhyatamam Bhuya Shrunu Me Paramam Vachaha Ishto si me drudhamiti Tato vakshyami te hitam Sarva guhyatamam bhuya Shrunu me paramam vachaha Ishto si me drudhamiti Tato Vakshyami Te Hitam Sarva Gohyatamam Bhuya Shruno Me Paramam Vachaha Ishto Si Me Dhridhamiti Tato Vakshyami Te Hitam Sarva Guhyatamam Bhuya Shrunu Me Paramam Vachaha Ishto Si Me Dridhamiti Tato Vakshyami Te Hitam Anyone? Ladies? No? Sarva Guhyatamam Bhuya Shrinu Me Paramam Vachaha Ishto Si Me Ishto Si Me Ishto Si Me Dridamiti Tato Vakshami Te Hita Sarva Guhyatamam Bhuya Shrinu Me Paramam Vachaha Ishto Si Me Drudamiti Sarva Guhyatamam The most confidential Bhuyaha Again Shrinu Just here me, from me, Paramam, the Supreme, Vachaha, instruction, Ishtaha, Asi, you are very dear to me, Me, of me, Drudham, very, Iti, thus, Tataha, therefore, Vakshyami speaking te for your hitam benefit. Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you, my supreme instruction, the most confidential knowledge of all. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. Purport. 
The Lord has given Arjuna knowledge that is confidential, knowledge of Brahman, and still more confidential knowledge of the super soul within, within everyone's heart. And now he is giving the most confidential part of knowledge, just surrender unto the supreme personality of Godhead. At the end of the ninth chapter, he has said, man manaha, just always think of me. The same instruction is repeated here to stress the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. <clears throat> this essence is not understood by a common man, but by one who is actually very dear to Krishna, a pure devotee of Krishna. This is the most important instruction in all Vedic literature. What Krishna is saying in this connection is the most essential part of knowledge, and it should be carried out not only by Arjuna, but by all living entities. <clears throat> Om Jnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manamapi Shachiputra Matra Swarupam Rupam Tasyagajamu Rupuring Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Madhavasham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tam Natosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagarna Raghuna Tan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savatutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shivashakan Vitangsha Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare <coughs> The most confidential knowledge that Krishna is about to give Arjuna is of course the famous Manmana Bhava Madhbhaktaha verse, which also appears in a slightly different form, but with practically the same meaning, uh, at the end of the ninth chapter. So here we have, it's at the end of the ninth chapter, which is halfway through the Bhagavad Gita. And here at the end of the eighteenth chapter, at the end means, yeah, practically Krishna, this is the end of the instruction. Just as one verse, then another verse, and then Krishna gives a little uh, fala shruti, what the results you'll get from hearing this, and then he finishes off with Sanjay speaking to Dhritarashtra and concluding from the point where Dhritarashtra had begun his question, what did they do when they went to the battlefield? What, what's going on? And then Sanjay in the last verse of Bhagavad Gita tells, well, it's not exactly Bhagavad Gita because it's not spoken by Krishna himself, but it's included according to Amrakana Nanyai. If you have a grove of, if you have a grove of mango trees and there are a few other trees there, you still call it a mango grove. Even if there are a few chiku trees, you still call it a mango grove. So it's it's mostly all what's in Bhagavad Gita. It's all mostly spoken by Krishna. Although Bhagavad Gita literally means what's spoken by Krishna. So at the end of the uh, the last verse included in Bhagavad Gita is Sanjay saying that, well, Krishna's there and Arjuna is there, so there's going to be victory. So uh, forget it for your sons. They're not going to win. <clears throat> so this is the most confidential part of knowledge. Theoretically, Krishna could have said this to Arjuna right at the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, but Arjuna wasn't ready to hear it at this time because he was a a uh, bewildered soul in the darkness of ignorance, or appearing to be like that. <clears throat> and of course, Bhagavad Gita was spoken for our benefit, and we are bewildered souls in the darkness of ignorance. Krishna says, I'm going to speak to, to it to you again. I said it before, I'm going to say it again, my topmost knowledge and topmost instruction. At the end of the ninth chapter, Krishna uh, said that, and then uh, Arjuna, instead of saying, great, well, that's what we should do. Uh, but he kindly, for the benefit of us in this material world, probed Krishna about, how do we do that? How do we see you here in this material world? Krishna had already given some idea about that. 
Rasoham Apsu Kaunteya, I am the taste in water, and so on. Mm. But Arjuna specifically asked how Krishna could be seen through the manifestations in this material world. And therefore, we, we, the tenth chapter is there, and uh, in which Krishna describes that anything of anything exceptional in this world can be accepted as a representation of Krishna. And he gives so many examples. Raganam Chamragendro Ham. Among the animals, I am the king of the animals, namely the lion. And he gives so many examples. And then Arjuna is still <clears throat> uh, taking the position of his consciousness still being in the material, still being attached to the material understanding of God. So he wants to see how practically how Krishna is everything. And Krishna shows the universal form. <clears throat> which is semi-personal, semi-impersonal, because it's Krishna, but it's everything. So then Arjuna asks, well, what's the best way to worship you? Is it best to worship the impersonal, absolute, or the personal form? And then that forms the twelfth chapter. And Krishna elaborates on, in that form, forms the first part of the twelfth chapter, and then the second part is Krishna uh, describing the glories of, oh, oh, there are three parts, aren't there? The first, the, how the personal and impersonal meditation, and the second part is various ways to approach Krishna, <coughs> and that his pure devotee decorated with all good qualities, is very dear to Krishna. Then in the 13th chapter again, the, uh, the, uh, the living being in this material world, how he <coughs> is, uh, is in this material world accompanied by the super soul. Krishna manifests himself also in the material world as the super soul. 14th chapter deals with the modes of material nature. Again, uh, more understanding of this material world, how we are to understand it, and, and of the person who is beyond the material modes of nature. And then in the 15th chapter, <clears throat> Krishna makes the distinction, between, very clear distinction between himself and the uh, living beings, the jivas. Uh, 16th chapter describes the mostly the demoniac people. In the 17th chapter, again, more discussion of the uh, modes of nature with the three kinds of shraddha, three kinds of faith. And that continues into the 18th chapter. And then we come to this again, the most confident. Speaking, Krishna speaking so many things, but the real point is to come to this, uh, to always think of Krishna and to surrender to him and that that's the next two verses and to go to him <clears throat> so krishna says this is my most uh confidential this is this is uh this is really the best thing i've got to tell you i've told you so many things but now i'm going to tell you which is really the best <clears throat> So imagine if you had God in front of you telling you, I'm going to tell you what's, what's for your best benefit. So anyway, there are so many cheaters may come and say, and then there are so many cheaters who come in the public, I, I'm, now I'm going to tell you the best benefit. Uh, so many cheating, so-called gurus. <clears throat> and what if you had God yourself standing in front of you saying, now I'm going to give you the formula by which you can get your best benefit. And Krishna says, I'm going to speak ishto uh, sime because you are my very, you're very close to me. You're very dear to me. So I'm going to speak this to you. Krishna speaks other things to other people. Through the, through the Vedic knowledge, he speaks uh, all kinds of things. Karma, jnana, yoga, worship of different demigods. And through various cheaters, he, he <laughs> 
in a reverse way, they could be they could be understood to be representatives of Krishna. <laughs> uh, in a reverse way, yeah. For people who want to be cheated, there are so many cheaters. <clears throat> so Krishna gives them the intelligence by which they can cheat others. And Krishna gives to people who want to be cheated the intelligence by which they think that what the cheaters say is actually true. And although the so-called Satya Sai Baba's popularity has gone down a lot, but it used to be, it's good, something good in this Kali Yoga, because other people have come up. But uh, we used to see that there are many uh, highly intelligent people from the material point of view. <coughs> uh, doctors and scientists, ISRO scientists, who, be who believed that Sai Baba was God against any logic or reason or shastra. There's abs the evidence is that he says so and he does some tricks and he becomes God. And people materially intelligent, spiritually, as Prabhupada would say, fool number one. He often said fool number one. So there are many in that category. The most foolish kind of people. <coughs> So Krishna, he didn't speak this to Duryodhana. If Krishna, if Krishna came to Duryodhana and said, I, I'll teach you what's, I'll, now I'll say what's for your best benefit. And Duryodhana, what would he say? Give me a means by which I can kill all the Pandavas. That's what, that's what Duryodhana would want, isn't it? Or Dhritarashtra. Uh, what about anyone? You go and you say, now, uh, of course, if Krishna himself came in front of people, they wouldn't recognize him. Uh, but yeah, some yogi comes and says, uh, genie in the bottle, pops out and says, now you can have whatever you want. What will people, what will the average person, just on the spot, what do I want? You can have anything you want. What would they say? There is a story of the of the uh, woman in the forest collecting firewood. <clears throat> so the women will go in the forest together and collect firewood and they'll bundle it up. They help each other put on the head and then they'll go and walk back to the village and either use the firewood themselves or sell it like that. <clears throat> and so somehow this woman was going, she'd become separated from the other woman she was going alone through the forest and she tripped and the bundle of heavy, heavy bundle. You see these women, little, very thin women, they carry it. I don't think any of us could carry it. They're very strong, these women who do that. So it fell down and she was in a fix because she'd worked so hard to collect all of that and it fell down. She could carry, but to get it up on her head is a big job. So she <laughs> called out in frustration, Oh, Govinda, Govinda, because she is after all a pious Hindu lady. Govinda, Govinda. So then a beautiful young boy, with bluish black color, comes in front and says, Yes, what do you want? He said, Oh, oh, you came, very good. Uh, just put this firewood back on my head. <laughs> That Govinda, Govinda, the, the uh, when we go to Tirumala, we hear that Govinda, Govinda, you're calling out, Govinda, Govinda. Everyone goes there for something they want. We go to temples because we want something. So that's pious. But what do people ask for? They could ask for pure devotional service, but people ask for visas for America, pass their exam, cure their illness, and so on. Maybe the, the visa to America went down after the request went down in Tirumala when Visa Ganesh came up in Chennai. 
You know about that? He didn't know? Oh, there are three trains a day from Mangalore to Chennai. <laughs> There's a visa Ganesh. He's best, best for getting American visas. You could fly also via Bangalore. <clears throat> So Krishna is speaking to Arjuna because Arjuna has enough sense to recognize what is the best thing. And even there are many people who read Bhagavad Gita or who comment on Bhagavad Gita and although it's absolutely clear that the best thing that Krishna is giving is to be his pure, dev to be his pure devotee but people, they're envious of Krishna, they don't want that and they reinterpret it. Just like this Prabhupada, he was so angry against this rascal, as he called him, Dr. Radha Krishna, on this Manmana Bhava Madhbhaktaha verse in the ninth chapter. Dr. Radha Krishna, in his commentary on Gita, he's supposed to be a very big philosopher, he's famous as the first president of independent India. Was it the first? I believe so. Second. second, second. Dr. Rajendra Prasad was the first, was it? For all, for all it's worth. So he's famous as the president of India, but before that he was famous as a great philosopher, an Oxford philosopher. So he was a great philosopher and he wrote his purport or his commentary on that Manmana Bhava verse in the ninth chapter, saying that it's such an so envious. He wrote that it is when Krishna is saying directly to always think of me, Krishna is giving that instruction, and he says, It is not to the person Krishna that we is not to the person Krishna that we have to think, but the unborn eternal within Krishna. So such a rascal. Such a rascal that Krishna is directly saying, always think of me. And he's so envious that he changes that. And said, don't think of Krishna. Think of the unborn eternal within Krishna. Which Krishna didn't say. Krishna makes it so clear and so easy that anyone who knows any Indian language can follow it very... Manmana, then you can... Manmat, that means... Uh, to me... Mana, man, think of. Madhbhakta. It's very easy to understand. It's not difficult Sanskrit at all. It's, it's practically when the children are being taught Sanskrit, they, 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 uh, they could, this Bhagavad Gita is very easy. Of course, it has a lot of philosophical terms. But the, the structure of the language is extremely easy. And actually in Bhagavad Gita we find that if you find the vocabulary of Bhagavad Gita, it's, it's only a few words which are being used all the time. There are many, many words which are used again and again in Gita, like <coughs> Atma, Yoga, Karma, Jnana, Guna. The same words being used, Yajna, of course, Dharma, uh, Sattva, Raja, Tama, all these. The same words are being used again and again. So it's very easy to understand. So, so Radha Krishna, he uh, very nice name, huh? <laughs> very nice name. But he became a demon. Prabhupada knew him personally. He was a professor in Calcutta, even at Calcutta University before he went to Oxford. So Prabhupada, knew him. the Gauriya Mad people, they knew him. They used to invite him to this and that, invite him to programs which he didn't attend. <clears throat> so we can also think if, if, if Krishna comes directly in front of us and says, well, now I'm going to tell you the best thing. Oh, you're going to make me a sannyasi, or you're going to make me a guru, GBC. We may have so many material <laughs> desires also. Yeah. We may have so many material desires. There's a story, I don't know where it came from. I heard it from Bhakti Charya Swami many years ago and I've in, heard it elsewhere since then. 
I, I don't know if it's Puranic. I'll tell it anyway. That Maybe if Krishna comes in front of me, I'll, I'll uh, ask him for some jamming device for people's phones during classes. Because I'm so fed up with people's phones going off in the classes. <clears throat> so the story is that man is very nicely worshipping Krishna, doing his puja every day. So Narad Muni sees him and he, Narad Muni comes down out of the sky and says, Oh, you're worshipping Krishna so nicely. So, I can arrange for you to go back to Godhead right now. You're such a great devotee. He said, oh, well, not right now. I've got my family responsibility. Come after, come after a little time. <clears throat> got, to get my, got to get my sons and daughters married, first of all. So, he come, now it comes after a little time. The man is very old. His sons and daughters are married. and says, okay, now you can come with me back to Godhead. You're such a great devotee. He says, no, no, no. I can't go right now because, you see, the... the, the Children are newly married, got to give them a little guidance, and the grandchildren are there. So Narad Muni comes another time and finds that he's become a snake in the courtyard and says, What happened? How did you become a snake? I, I don't know, but anyway, don't ask me to go back to Godhead because I've got to protect the family. So that's it in short. The idea that someone may appear to be very de devoted, but they have so many ulterior motives. A, a practical example of that we can find in our lives is that we, we may have the opportunity to serve Krishna, just like there's a whole big city, we have books, we go out and distribute them. But we, we have other things. We, uh, validly, we may have other things to do, but it may be that sometimes we find some excuse not to do it. <clears throat> a, a, an anecdote that was told to me by one of my godbrothers many years ago, I think this was even before, yeah, I, probably before Srila Prabhupada passed away from our mortal vision. He was doing book distribution, he's a German devotee, doing book distribution in Germany where it gets very cold and lots of snow, mostly in Germany in the winter. So uh, he was on a traveling sanctum party and one morning it was extremely cold, heavy snow, and they thought he, th he was the leader of the party and he thought, well, why don't we just take a break today and not go out on book distribution? We can sit and read. <coughs> we'll, be, we'll do something Krishna conscious. And then he saw the people all going to work. And he thought, well, if they can go to work, uh, uh, the, the, the men working on the road, digging the road. So he thought, well, if they can go out in the cold, digging the road, just to get some money for sense gratification, we can go out in the difficult conditions and give them books and take the money which they would otherwise use for sense gratification. <clears throat> so what do we want? Actually, that happened in the uh, Mahaprakash of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Uh, one time in Navadvip, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had returned from Gaya as, as a very different person. Before he went to Gaya, he appeared to be a <coughs> cocky young scholar not very interested in devotion to Krishna. When he came back, he was absolutely intoxicated in love of Krishna. <clears throat> and shortly after that, he wanted to reveal to all the devotees that he is Krishna himself. So he did so in a 21-hour rhapsody when all the devotees were with him and they were just seeing he's directly Krishna. And then at one point, he, he gave them, he said, what, what do you want? What do you, he said to everyone, what do you want? What benediction do you want? So they, and different devotees were asking for different things. That you make me, please give me pure devotional service to your lotus feet. Please give me the association of devotees life after life. Please make me the, a, a proper servant of my guru. So many 
devotees were asking for different benedictions. <clears throat> Just on the spot. They didn't have time to think about it. <clears throat> so we can also think, uh, what, what, what do we want? Actually, it's good to ask ourselves from time to time, what do we want? We're, we're, <clears throat> we're here by Srila Prabhupada's mercy in this Krishna conscious movement. What do we want? What is our aim in life? What are we doing? We should always keep it in mind what we are doing and why we are doing. Otherwise, what we are doing, if we don't have a clear understanding of why we're, why we're doing it, we, we may end up with something else. There was one devotee, he's probably passed away now. He, he was from Madras, as it was known at the time. And he was actually initiated in the Gorya Mat. <clears throat> but he was living in Iskon. And he did very humble service all day. He was well educated, spoke excellent English, which in the 1970s wasn't so common. <clears throat> but he did very humble menial services and he just had rags. He wore very poor clothes, but you could give him a lack of rupees and send him to deliver it and no problem. He'd go, on, he'd go the cheapest way possible and deliver it and come back. But he was very clear to everyone I'm doing this because I know bhakti is the most powerful process and I want to go to swarga. So I'm doing all, I'm going to do bhakti very sincerely and I'll go to swarga. That was his aim and no one could convince him otherwise. <laughs> then we remember Dhruv Maharaj, his example that I was searching for broken glass and I got a diamond. He wanted the big kingdom greater than that of Lord Brahma. That's pretty ambitious for a young boy. He wants, he wants a kingdom better than that of Lord Brahma. But then when he got the darshan of Krishna, he thought, oh, what a useless thing I was looking for. What a useless thing I was looking for, but I got Krishna, the best thing. I was looking for little bits of broken glass and I got the most valuable diamond. That was by the mercy of Narad Muni upon him. So we can all ask ourselves that, well, what is our aspiration? Well, we, 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 we may have immediate ones, just like there's an aspiration here. Nam Nishta Prabhu wants to build a temple for Krishna. Radha Govinda here in Mangalore. So that's an immediate aspiration. And you want to get that farm in Andhra Pradesh. Well, you've got the land. Now you have to get the money. So that if, if, you, if someone asks you, what do you want? I want a lot of money. Is that why you came to see me? I don't have any. <laughs> uh, so... We may have immediate aspiration, but what is our ultimate, our highest aspiration? Okay, what, what do you want? I'm not Krishna, but I can ask on behalf. What do you want? Pure devotional service. Okay, you want pure devotional service. Sure, sure you want that? It means no material attachments. Every second, completely surrendered to Krishna. Whatever happens, under any circumstances. Sure? Draupadi was dragged in the assembly. Her cloth was being torn off. She didn't say, oh, I, I got to do this. Ah, I thought I was a devotee of Krishna and look what happened. Could, nothing worse for her could have happened in her life. If anyone had thought, if, any, if, if she could think what's the worst thing possible, she couldn't even imagine. It was unimaginable how in her contaminated period that made it even worse. She was dragged by her hair. The queen, she didn't know about the gambling match. She was dragged by her hair in front of Dhritarashtra and Bhishma, who she'd looked to as her protectors, as very venerable people. And she, and she called, she said, what is Dharma? And they wouldn't say, they wouldn't say. She couldn't imagine. 
Even Bhima, he, Bhishma, he, he uh, waffled, well, it's very difficult to understand dharma. You know, it's obvious this is the biggest. Adharma is absolutely obvious, but no one would protect her. And she couldn't, she couldn't, no one could have imagined. She didn't say, oh, phew, I was a devotee of Krishna. What's the use of Krishna consciousness? I mean, that, that's really, uh, are we ready for that? If we, if we say pure devotion, are we really ready? I mean, it's not likely that someone's going to take you into the middle of Mangalore and strip your clothes off, but anything can happen. Devotees have, have been tortured, and actually the devotees who, who try most for Krishna, they, they usually suffer the most, or at least materially it seems. Haridash Thakur, Jesus Christ, Prabhupada gave the example. Prabhupada was sitting in Vrindavan, he could have lived very comfortably. He took so much trouble, we don't realize. Heart attack, struggle, living among the intoxicated people, uh, no one listening to him in the beginning. Even when he started the movement, there's so many, so many problems actually all the time. We don't hear about that so much. We hear about all the, there are many good things going, many difficult things, so many difficulties Prabhupada had to deal with. So, Are we really ready for that? Who dares to pray as Kunti Devi prayed? Vipada Santu Tashashvat Tatra Tatra Jagat Guru Bhavato Darshanam Yad Sat Apuna Bhava Darshanam Give me more and more difficulties so that I can see you. Then we won't see repeated birth and death. Who can pray like that? Now I'm not saying don't pray for pure devotional service, but we should know that uh, <coughs> It's not cheap. It's not that we indulge in all kinds of whimsical things and also have pure devotional service. It's, it's, it's a heavy thing for Arjuna. It was really heavy. He, now he's, he's got to kill the people who... He has, he has to kill the people he loved the most. And Krishna is telling him to do it. And Krishna also has love for Bhishma and Drona. It's, it's very difficult. It may be very difficult for Arjuna to understand. Krishna didn't exactly explain all that. Why? He, Krishna says, well, you have to do what I say, and I'm telling you to fight. But exactly the point that uh, why, why Bhishma, why Drona, that Arjuna, he brought that objection that, oh, I, 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 I don't have any problem fighting, I've fought so many times, but why, why Bhishma? How can I attack him? And Krishna didn't even exactly answer that point. He just said, it's, it's your duty as a Kshatriya to fight, and you have to do what I say. And he explained to Arjuna why you have to do what I say, and Arjuna was ready to do that. With, but, but why exactly, why is it, so, why Bhishma, why Drona? Why, anyone else? But why them? But there's no un, no condi unconditional. We may not even understand everything. Why Krishna is doing things? Unconditional. It's uh, we should go on praying for pure devotional service, and know that we can attain it. But at the same time, we should be aware that. We may have to face so many difficulties. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has made it very easy in this Kali Yuga by chanting the holy names, but still uh, the nature of this material world is that it's, it is difficult and people in this world are opposed to devotional service. There's an idea at the present time that, well, People are interested in devotional service, so let's preach something else, and then, af then afterwards we'll preach devotional service. But then <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about something else, and then when they, we make friends with people, and then we'll introduce devotional service. <clears throat> but uh, the nature of people is that they're not interested in devotional service, so 
when we bring that up, then they may object. In, in Croatia, I believe it was, I was told that devotees did some bridge preaching program, they called it, for about one year. They were talking all vague things about self-actualization and controlling anger and all this kind of thing. And then after a year, they introduced Krishna consciousness. And the, the people who were coming, they said, what? You're Hare Krishna devotees? You should have told us in the beginning and we would have walked out. And they just walked out right there. <laughs> so that didn't work. <laughs> it may work in some cases. But that was one example. Uh, Duryodhana, uh, you, uh, practically you could speak the same philosophy of uh, Bhagavad Gita, not on the battlefield. He just wanted to fight. He was very eager to fight. You could have, you could have spoken the same philosophy to Duryodhana and he might have listened and understood it intellectually and come up with a different conclusion because that's what everyone in the world does who studies the Vedas. They come up with so many different conclusions. And even the Bhagavad Gita where it says very clearly, Manmana, think of me, and Dr. Radha Krishna has something else to say. And people like to read that Bhagavad Gita because it, it panders to their egoism and their envy of Krishna. So we have to consider what do we actually want? It's good to ask ourselves from time to time, what do we actually want? As long as we're in this world, we have various needs. For this body, we have various needs. Maybe for the mind, we have various needs. For those who are in family life, they have various needs for their family. But beyond that, what's, the, what's ultimate? What is our ultimate need? What, what do we ultimately want? We may accept so many things in this world for the service of Krishna. We may accept a wife. Someone may accept a wife so they can serve Krishna together with a wife. Or they may accept medicine because they want the body to get healthy so they can serve Krishna. Of course, there's no guarantee that any material adjustment will work. It may be, it may be that the wife turns out to be more of an obstacle than a help in Krishna consciousness. Or it may turn out that the medicine actually makes you more sick. That sometimes happens. I've had experience. <clears throat> but throughout it all, we have to keep it clear that I am meant for serving Krishna. I am not part of this world. And it's also good to have some clear goal. This you, if you go see all these self-help books, they'll tell you that also. Pure devotional service is the goal, but it's a... Uh, it's somewhat vague, isn't it? I mean, in your own personal life, it, it's some. What are you going to do? That's the point. What, what are you going to do, actually? What are we going to do for Krishna? Say, oh, okay, I want to be a pure devotee, but then what are we going to do? Here, we, here we're in the Sankirtan movement. Krishna wants it spread all over the world. What are we going to do? We have to do something specific. All right, be a pure devotee. But actually, Krishna didn't just tell Arjuna to be a pure devotee. He said, Mama Nusra Yudhyacha. Think of me and fight. He's got something to do for Krishna also. So we should all think, what are we going to do? What are, what are we all going to do for Krishna? It's nice to be a devotee. But what are we going to do to assist in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission? That we should all think. When we're coming newly, that's one thing. It's just like a child. First you have to bring them up to the adult level and educate them. But then they have to do something. It's just like you educate a child and then uh, they're supposed to go and do some work based on the training that they had in the school and this and that. So in the same way we're 
getting trained in Krishna consciousness, but then we should do something. And it's not that everyone's going to be a great Acharya, but everyone should have some specific service in Krishna's mission, and especially those who are, who are trained as brahmanas, they should uh, imbibe this knowledge, and it's their duty to share that with others. So what are you all going to do for Krishna consciousness, for ourselves and for others? You can all think, Nam Nishta Prabhu has a, an immediate goal, right? Build a temple. But apart from that, you, you just have to see, okay, Krishna put me here. Prabhu Datta Desh. It's the place given by my Prabhu, by my... So the, the aim should be, think big. Make everyone in Mangalore Krishna conscious. Make every home a temple. How about that? Every house there should be a temple. That's longer planning. What are you going to do? Cooperate with Nam Nishta Prabhu. Okay, he can lead you like that. What about all of you? Your Grihastas. Can you do more? Bringing up your family in Krishna consciousness, that's good. Can you do more? For Krishna, we're not going to ask you to go and fight in a battle. Not yet, anyway. You never know, it might happen, but probably not. But anyway, preaching Krishna consciousness is like a fight in many ways. Clearing, fighting against ignorance. Okay, so we, we finish, finish this class with a question. It's supposed to be giving answers. But we finish with a question. What, what, what are you going to do? What's, what's your aim? What's your aspiration for serving Krishna? There are so many things to do for spreading the Sankirtan movement. What about the ladies? What are they going to do? Going to be pure devotees? What else? Sixty-four rounds. Sixteen's yeah. okay. Yeah, but no, I, I know. Well, Prabhupada didn't say no. He said sixteen's okay. You can you can chant sixteen, and go back to Godhead by Prabhupada's grace. Yeah. If you chant more, that's nice. But there's so many other things to do. And, uh, Ladies, that they are all gurus, right? Women gurus, right? Isn't it? First guru is the mother, right? So that's an important job. Bringing up children in Krishna consciousness. Very important. The women are all out being airline pilots and politicians and who's going to look after the children? Most important role for the, that goes with the women's body is to be a, a mother and guru. So that's their important role. That's their first important role. They can do other things also, but Krishna conscious and make your children Krishna conscious also. Okay, Hare Krishna. Anyone like to say anything? Question, comment, protest? Anything? No? All right, then we'll finish. All glories to His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada, Vancha Kalpataru Pascha, Kripa Sindhubi Evacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha.